everybody, I am Mono Yasha of Dream Vision Creations and today we're going to start our first Halloween edition this year of how to work with our skull heads. This particular tutorial is going to be out how to start with doing dry brush techniques and staining on your skull. So go from something that's like this, a single color, to something that's got multiple tones of browns, blacks, essentially whatever you want to use as a uh, not a highlight, but a low light as far as all your crack areas and just filling in and making more 3D and really pop whenever you're wearing the costume. Uh, basically we start with just a couple of the materials here. I'm just going to jump right into it. Uh, we've got two cups um, in case I want to do different colors. Um, usually I just do, I'm going to do one color for this tutorial because that's all you really need because all you're doing is building up paint. Uh, we use acrylic paints for our skulls. I have already gone ahead and washed the skull. Whenever you get any kind of plastic product from us, it's going to have some residue of mold release on it. So it's really a good idea to take a little bit of dish soap and just kind of scrub the surface real quick, rinse it off. Um, all of our screws and nuts and bolts and stuff we use are stainless steel, so you don't have to worry about any of that rusting. And then just let it sit outside in the sun and just, you know, sun dry or put it in front of a fan and let it dry that way. Either way, uh, make sure it's fully dry before you start painting and uh, just using regular acrylic paints is fine. You can also use um, car paints but I just find acrylics like the cheapest, easiest to use product. Especially when they already have a medium that you can use which is a staining antique medium by um, Americana Paints. I think it's Amer yeah, Americana Paints. There might be a couple different uh, manufacturers of staining medium but all it is is a 50-50 mixture. You mix this with the paint in a cup um, half and half and then you use that to brush onto your material and it makes it uh, bond better. Also it helps to keep the paint wet longer so it gives you more time to be able to smear around the paint, take off paint, add more on, you know, whatever you need to do in order to still keep your highlight areas like up here on the top bridge of the skull you know the teeth area you can wipe the extra paint off of there and make them really pop with you know your original base color um also i have three paint brushes here you can use use sorry you can use just one if you like but i like to have like a really thick paint brush put lots of paint on there at once i like to use a medium paint brush for trying to get inside the eye socket areas and then a smaller paintbrush in order to mix up my color as well as try to get in between the teeth and any of the little areas uh, like right here around the jawline area you've got this little muscle bone right here it's a little difficult to get in there with the bigger paintbrushes and sometimes bigger paintbrushes can actually brush off a lot of paint too so I always like to have three and of course a cup of water You'll be using this cup of water in order to brush out your paintbrushes so they don't have the paint sit on there too long as well as having two paper towels. One's going to be your dry paper towel for taking off minimal amounts of paint. And then you'll have a wet paper towel, which will go ahead and dip into the water here. And it's not going to be dripping wet. You just want it a little damp. So whenever you're brushing on the paint, you can take off, you know, larger areas of paint for the highlight areas. But you have this kind of set aside. All right. Now the first part will be to mix up your paint. So I've got my textile medium here. Actually, it's brand new, so it hasn't even opened yet. And lovely noises. <laughs> okay, I'm just having enough in here to fill it up maybe an eighth or so. I'm going to fill it up a little bit more. There we go. And then of course I've got a, a dark brown, which is also by the Americana line. I like to use Americana. I also like to use uh, Deco Art. They're both really good paint um, paint brands of acrylic. They're not the super premium stuff, but they're also not the low quality. They tend to work really good for sticking the plastics. And 
And you can see that's about 50-50. I'm going to use my small paintbrush here, just kind of mix it all together. And if you don't like the color of just one paint, you can also mix in other colors. Like, this is a bit on the browner side. I want that a little bit more of a reddish color so I'm actually going to take a little bit of my more redder color brown and mix it in here okay I'm brightening up a tad bit there we go and again I'm having that cup of water on hand to easily brush out or just quickly rinse your paintbrushes. Okay, now the very first step, I'm going to start kind of globbing on this paint. Now when you're doing this, don't worry about doing the whole skull at once. Pick sections at a time to do and this way you make sure you leave yourself enough time to be able to pull the paint back off. If you did the whole skull in paint, and then you try to essentially clean it off, you end up running these areas, you'll end up having like paint lines where more of the paint was on there or start drying around the edges. And it's gonna be really difficult to get that off and it's gonna take away from that natural effect that you're going for. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this nose cavity here. I'm gonna glob in a bunch of paint. Make sure I'm really getting into those undercuts and stuff. There's a bunch of areas where there's bone kind of pressing in like a dimple. So you want to make sure you get the paint really in there. I find kind of doing like a little swirling effect with the paintbrush while the bristles are on the actual plastic really helps to push the paint around and get in those cracks. all up in there. What you can also do too with the, the staining medium is when you do a lighter color like this you can also go back with a black and really darken up these inner areas like in the eye area, in the mouth, in the nose. And I'm just going to kind of start brushing it out towards the edge here. Like I said the staining medium helps uh, in here the inhibit the paint from drying too fast so you do have a decent amount of work time with this and right now I'm just trying to get into all these cuts I'm sure I got a good amount of paint in there If you notice while I'm globbing this on, I'm also kind of brushing the paint along the surface on the smoother sections. Just because I want to make sure that I don't get anything to clump up too much. Pretty much just focusing on the top right now and one side of the skull. Just getting into all these cracks. And don't use a paintbrush that you don't want to mess up because you'll be really pushing this paintbrush around and these bristles and shoving them into a bunch of different little crevices and stuff like that and you will mess up your bristles so use a use a yucky paintbrush or one you just didn't spend a bunch of money on don't don't use your high quality oil paint paintbrushes on this and I'm gonna start working around the teeth and what's really nice is you can actually open up these skulls all the way like this. It makes it super easy to just use the 
hinges as a handle to kind of brush everything in here. I'm working pretty fast with this, and like I said, if you feel nervous at all, just work on a little like two by three section at a time. But I am going really fast with brushing this in. Again, just getting all these cracks. Get these front teeth. If you wanted to go with a, a more natural kind of color, you can go with more of a, a yellowish golden orange color, which seems to be the natural staining that skulls will have. I'm just going a bit more brown with this one. Okay, I'm just going to kind of I'm going to spread this out. And brush it all over the place. Okay. I got brushed around pretty good. These look really dirty right now. So what I'm gonna do is take my dry paper towel and I'm just going to very lightly and take the paper towel very flat and just wipe it along the surface. I'm not trying to stick my fingers down at all. I'm not trying to follow the cracks. I am literally just going straight over the surface. So I wanna show off those areas there, the undercuts. I want the paint to stay in those areas. Inside the nose cavity. I'm not really focusing on the back of the nose too much. I'm just pulling it out from the front. So I want it to be dark inside there. using a clean side of the paper towel to kind of bring a little bit more paint off the surface here on some of these high areas. You don't want the stain there. So along the, the tooth root line here, along the front of the nose, the teeth, high areas around where the root lines are for the molars, top bridge here, like the bone jaw. Now I know it's an area right here where I have some staining going on, so I'm using a wet towel. Just kind of pull that off. And again, a wet towel right here. Wet towel in the very pop-up sections here of the teeth, front of the teeth. Like I said, this is, a, this is a very basic stain job. 
If you wanted to go like a whole nother level with this, you could actually do some airbrushing with it too. Um, you could also go in there with darker tones of color. Got that right there is very basic stain. And you can see now all those crack lines are really showing. You know, big difference between this side and that side. But like I said, working in small sections, don't worry about it. Um, as long as you make sure you wipe off the paint really good. There's no like transition lines essentially. If I didn't wipe off the paint fast enough, there would be actually a line here of paint showing. But I was really good about getting that wiped off. I'm going to continue working back here. And again, I've just been using the big paintbrush so far for all this. Making all the cracks. I like to do my skulls in two steps essentially. The first step is to pretty much get in all the cracks in all the deep areas. And then I like to go back and really thicken up some of my, my deep areas around the eyes, mouth, uh, inner mouth. Essentially anywhere when number of lights hitting from the top, it'd actually be a shadow. So in here would be a shadow, be a shadow in here. You have shadowing down here. So I try to go back over that with a dry brush and thicken it up to really just give it a good accent piece. Um, also, I like to make sure there's lots of shadow inside the nose and, of course, in the jaw area, which I haven't done yet. And some of these areas can be really deep in these cracks, especially here in the back of the skull, so do not be afraid to kind of really clump in that paint getting on there really thick because otherwise you won't be able to get down those cracks. Like I'm going like really really thick right here. Just kind of bringing some of the color into the eye ridge. Right now I'm just kind of brushing it out so it doesn't have any thick edges. We do not want areas of paint to have clump lines. Just kind of make it a little wispy. What you can also do too to kind of speed up the process, you can use a heat gun or a hair dryer. A hair dryer probably better. Or heat gun on low and just, you know, taking it away every once in a while to check the heat because you don't want it to be too hot because you actually might start warping the plastic. But just to help like areas and like I said in the eye area here or in the nose and the mouth, you really want that paint to stay. Uh, for one, you don't have to wipe it off and two, you can just use a hair dryer just to get the staining process to kick a bit faster. So the paint sticks and it doesn't stay wet. Okay, so I got that area done. I'm going to do right under here. And using my dry towel again, wiping off these areas. And 
And you can see it's sticking a lot more here on the top of the head because this area is slightly more textured. So we're definitely going to use the wet paper towel to get this off. And from the, the front of the skull was pretty smooth. Back of the skull is more textured. So it's, it's staining this more. So we're going to have to definitely use a wet paper towel on that. Also, don't be afraid to keep flipping your, you know, dry towel. Get a cleaner area. So you don't just keep smearing. Like here I got a really clean section so I can just start making that blend better. If I kept using the same side, I would just be smearing around paint. And a nice fresh side. You can see that's coming off really good just by giving a nice fresh section of the paper towel. So I might not need to use a white paper towel, because that actually worked pretty good. Let me get that off. This right here is exactly what I'm talking about. Now I see I had a bit of paint. Forget this focus. Sitting right here, you see this kind of line of paint. That's what happens when you have paint sitting there in a big clump. Thankfully, since you have staining medium, that can actually just be washed off with a wet paper towel. So I was able to remove that. But if you're working on the upper skull here and you got all this paint work, if you try to use wet paper towel on a section that's got a lot of paint on it, uh, it's going to be very abrupt. And that's not really what you're wanting to go for. There's also areas right here where a little too much came off, so I'm kind of going back with the paintbrush. And I have a little bit of stain on here, just a little bit. And I'm just going in here and I'm just kind of stippling it. Just using the end of the brush and just kind of doing a little texture. If you just do a brush stroke, it's going to look like a brush stroke. So if you stipple it, it actually gives a nice blend effect. Which I like to do anywhere that I've had a lot of paint. Because there will be brush strokes. Now that's another thing you can do if you have an airbrush. Is you can airbrush this and get rid of those, those brush strokes essentially. I'm just kind of helping to blend in those brush strokes now. Like I said, I'm, I'm going really extreme with my coloration on this skull because I really want it to pop. You don't have to go with this much stain. And again, just using very little, little bits of paint. You can use your paper towel to kind of dab onto if it seems like too much paint. These are all areas that I know that I want to have a lot of paint on them. You can go in in layers too. So if one layer seems a little too thin, just one stroke over, uh, work on something else, come back to it, and then add more paint. You can keep on building up on these layers. And again, you can go back with your paper towel and dab at it. There's one area here that I'm not liking too much, which is this area. It's getting a little messy. So I'm just going to use my wet paper towel and just kind of pull off more of that paint. I've also let this area sit for quite a bit, so I want to pull some more of that paint off here and kind of shine up this area a bit.
I'm gonna turn up this area. Make it a little brighter around these crack lines. As you can see, it pulls off quite a bit of paint. Brighter along this ridge. I'm going to do, since I really didn't like this area at first, I'm just going to stipple in some of the color again. I'm using my paper towel to take some of the paint off so it's not too thick. Use my dry paper towel to again just pull a little bit of that paint off. I'm just pressing down on it. I'm not brushing it, just pressing. And that's just getting it to blend better. You see, it's got a lot better shadowing now on that tooth area. Because it was getting a little thicker than I would like. Now, you can see right here in the back of the skull, which I haven't worked on too much, you can see those brush strokes. Right along here. Again, you can go back stippling it. And that will help hide those brush strokes. Little, little, little bits of paint. This is what it looks like when I'm putting direct paint on there. You see how thick that is? That's without me dabbing it on the paper towel. Now, this can work because then you can just kind of spread it out over little areas. Um, if you're working in an area that's not really uh, a low light area, it's going to be very noticeable. It's going to stick out pretty quick. But since this is an area that is a low light, you can get the blend really well. And again, down here, brush strokes, and it gets the kind of light inside there. So you just want to stipple in more color. It's another area where you can actually just take paint directly from the cup. You don't have to worry about drying it off and it works I'm also going to go in underneath of the jawbone here that also has brush strokes and I've already done one layer of stippling on this, and I'm going back and doing a second layer and making it a bit darker. You can see how it's darkened up right there. So don't forget to do layers. So as it stands right now, we've got almost one full side dry brushed, and here's what the other side looks like with no dry brushing. You can see the difference. You can see all the detail just pops out whenever you add that paint to it. We're going to continue going with this one side of the mask so you can see a, the difference between the one side and the other side. Open the jaw back up. And again, just slathering all the paint, all the cracks.
cleaning. See how muddy that looks right now? But just filling in all the cracks. Okay, down with the dry paper towel. Start kind of pushing it around, getting all those brush marks off. Actually, wants a little dirty in her. And that right there is the difference between a stained and non-stained skull. And the only thing you have left to do after this process, uh, once you get everything dark enough that you like, uh, you just take a coating of Krylon Clear gloss, you can either do shiny or matte, whatever one you prefer. I usually do the matte for the skulls. And the teeth, they already have a shiny gleam to them, but if you want to make them a little bit more shiny, you can use the Americana Super Gloss paint. Uh, it comes in actually a jar or a little, little dropper container like this, and brush it on the teeth in order to make them super, super shiny. But thank you so much for watching this tutorial on how to do staining and I will put a whole bunch of links on the bottom in the description as far as uh, ordering the skulls and the different materials that I use and links on where to find them. Uh, also I might link another tutorial on other people who have done skulls so that way you can see other examples. But thank you!